Your New Year's resolution is in full swing and you are trying to lose weight. Help yourself with Calitrin. Calitrin is the safe, effective way to lose weight. When you buy three months supply right now, you'll get three months free. It's scientifically proven to help you lose weight. Order it now at acetj.com slash weight loss. Calitrin. Our friend Richard Tocato from the Richard Tocato Companies is here. And Richard, not only are you helping people pay off credit cards, you're helping them with home repairs as well. Oh, that's right. We had a, one of your listeners called in. She had to get her pool repaired. She get, had to get a new roof on to even get the loan. And we got that work done before it closed and paid for it with the cash out. All at one time. All at one time. Can't Very do that easy. at a bank. No, you can't. That's what it's about. Options with the Richard Chicago Companies. Find out more at homewithrichard.com. That's homewithrichard.com. The Richard Chicago Companies. Welcome to TJ's podcast. Hey, TJ Fanaticos, and welcome to TJ's podcast. Probably the most awkward podcast that uh, that you're going to see in a while because. I'm all out of sorts here. I'm all out of whack. I don't even know what's going on. I got so much happening. Um, the thing is that I'm having to do this podcast from the home today. I'm actually on the set of TJ and Jody's house where we do the podcast. This is our this is our set for that um, because I'm having to record this. Today's Wednesday that I'm recording this. Um, and the reason why is because uh, Thursday, which would have been last night I'm, I'm gonna say it like it's uh, currently happening uh we had a big tj fanatico's cocktail party for the official tj fanatico uh i'm sorry the tj fanatico's the official ones um now i would go on and on about how much fun it was and how much i enjoyed uh you know meeting everybody and rubbing elbows with the common folk and all of that stuff. But I can't say that because I haven't done it yet and I don't want to be lying. Um, But that's why this podcast is having to be recorded from the house. Um, Because I got to give you something, right? The fanaticos would rise up if I didn't give you something. So um, we'll see how it goes. And to be honest with you, uh, I'd rather be doing this right now than what I'm supposed to be doing, which is uh, outside finishing the yard work. Uh, we got a bunch of mulch. This this is this has been mulching week at my house, and you know that's something that I used to hire hands to do. You know, my wife handled all of that. She would book the people to come mow and and weed eat and and edge and do whatever you know yard people do. And then it, when, when it was time for um, aerating and planting and mulching and all that, they just, you know, they would do that or work on the sprinklers and, and that kind of thing. Uh, but that was back in the days of milk and honey, you know what I'm saying? Um, when you decide in your 50s that you're going to break away from what you've been doing for, you know, 30 years and, on, and being at the top of your field, um, and then start your own business and try to build something else. That's the kind of stuff you got to deal with. You know, things like spreading mulch. Ew. Look. But it has to be done. It has to be done. And no, and make no mistake about it. You know, Ace and I have, you know, we're not ones to brag or anything. And, and, um, I think that's been a little bit to our detriment at times. Um, you notice whenever I have to promote myself or something, I do it in a silly way, like a tongue-in-cheek way, like I'm over-the-top arrogant and stuff because I get uncomfortable saying, go check me out or go, you know. It's easier for me to say us when I'm talking about Ace and me, but when I'm just talking about me, like the Fanatico's cocktail party and all of that, it's a little bit more difficult, but, um, but yeah, Ace and I are, I mean, our, our radio show, uh, is considered one of the best ever in all of, in all of radio history. We're, we're at the top in, in the field. Um, and not just by you, the people who listen to it, but I'm talking about people in the industry and everything, but we've always downplayed that kind of stuff. Uh, 
but I guess you know looking back on it we should have been we should have been promoting that instead of you know playing you know the humble cats which we are I just can't I don't even know if we could have done it like seriously not not being a jokey kind of um you know tongue-in-cheek sort of thing going hey how great we are we were so great anytime we did tell you about something that was an honor for us that we received in the business we would always tell we would tell it on the show because we wanted to give credit to the the listeners and we would say the ace and tj radio family i mean you're you you've supported us and you've you know you've helped us get to this and whatever but you know, just to sit and talk about awards that we've gotten or that we've been nominated for or, you know, those types of things. We never, we never did that, you know. But now look at us. We ain't crap. Huh. Okay. Uh, it's also going to be a little bit weird because uh, I'm not at my desk. And you go, well, why didn't you just do it at the desk that you use when you do TJ's political show? It's because that is a significant look that's a specific look and when people on the social medias see that i'm sitting in front of that big american flag and all of that then they're thinking oh he's doing his political stuff and the liberals don't even want to give it a chance so liberals do listen to stuff that that we do or that i do that isn't political like tj and jody's house and um and the tj's podcast and stuff like that um but once you see see that American flag behind me on the internet, if you're a liberal, you probably wouldn't even you just scroll right past it. So I didn't want to do that. And believe it or not, I don't have a bunch of different studios in the house. This is our this is, if you've never seen TJ and Jody's house podcast, this is our loft, and this is where we do it. It being the podcast. So that's a little bit awkward because I don't have my desk and my laptop is down here. And I'm looking straight down at it to be able to read the information. And it's also kind of far away from me. Let me straighten my hat. So I may not be able to see all of it anyway. So I just have to go from memory. Where's my little... Oh man. I left my little note sheet. As to the order, I wanted to go with these stories. That's all right. I can do it. I can do it. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Here we go. Uh, relationship stuff here. Sign of the times. Sign of the time. Uh. Sound just like Prince. Um, question is in the headline, is it acceptable to ask a stranger out in person? I didn't even, I've, I've been married for almost 30 years. When I was a, when I was a dating person, um, there was, that was the only way you asked somebody out was in person. There were no dating sites or any, you know, there wasn't even a, an internet to speak of. I mean, we had the internets, but there were no social medias or anything like that. So this is just, it's interesting to me where the culture is when it comes to this kind of stuff. And it's in the toilet. That's where it is. Our culture's in the toilet. So uh, it's a whole article where they've um, surveyed a bunch of singles and um, basically the people they survey, the single people, they want more of it they want more uh, being asked out in person by strangers or whatnot and here's the kicker i would have never thought this i'm just summing up the entire article for you basically said i would like this is women i would like to be asked out in person by a stranger just don't be creepy about it oh oh well Nobody ever thought of that. Don't be creepy. Um, do you think that if an adult man goes up to a woman 
and he has the ability to determine what is creepy and what isn't. Uh, uh, as far as he can recognize that he's creepy and then not do it. Do you think that, that he could pull that off? You're either creepy or you're not. Now, you could be not creepy and then think about what you're going to say when you ask a woman out and you go, oh, wait a minute, that, that sounds kind of creepy. Well, then you're okay. You've got enough intelligence and social skills to know how to how to phrase something and not how or and not and to not phrase something. How not to phrase something. But if you're creepy, you're not going to know the difference. It's like people who are dumb don't know that they're not they're not they're too dumb to know that they're dumb. You know that whole thing. They're too dumb to know when to shut up. Same thing with creepy. They're too creepy to know when not to creep. If it's a creepy person, wouldn't you want to know that in the beginning? I would. It's kind of like a face tattoo. You know, if you're the you're the manager of the bank and you're looking to hire a new teller and somebody comes in for the interview and they got a giant FU tattooed on the side of their face, you know you're going to know right away, "Hey, I don't need to waste my time with this person. It's not going to work." Same way with this. If you're a weird person, a weird guy, and you walk up and go, uh, your hair smells good. Want to go out on a date? I think that's, you know, as long as you're not like violent creepy or anything like that, dangerous creepy, it would be a good way to just let them know right away, hey, I don't need to be going out with this dude. But how groundbreaking is this, is this article, though? And I'm being I'm being serious. I'm not I'm not being sarcasm. You would think I'm being sarcasm on this, but I'm not. Um, it shows that the social skills in our country amongst young people uh, are so inept that now men don't even know how to approach women in person to strike up a conversation that will lead to you know, getting asked on a date. Because you've got a generation of people who their entire lives have been sitting in their room on social media and on video games and they don't know how to go out and approach a stranger about anything. They can't, they don't even know how to call a, a store and have the store pick up the phone and then they go, hey, uh, excuse me, do y'all have any rollerblades? Do y'all sell rollerblades? They would never dream of doing that. They would freak out. They probably, a 30 to 35 year old doing that would probably wet themselves being so nervous trying to, trying to ask the people at the, at the store whether or not they sold rollerblades. It's like if they can't order something and then pick it up curbside, they don't mess with it. They just, they have, you know, are constantly avoiding personal contact. But you know what? They still want companionship. So now they don't have those skills under their belt. They don't know how to do it. Now, if I would have been thinking, then I could I could have opened a school on teaching, you know, strange, socially inept people how to talk to other people. Because I know those people doing that now are making a fortune. And they, all they got to do is call themselves experts. I'm a social connection expert. What does that mean? You know, I call myself um, a, a, a leading societal profiler. It, you know, I didn't have to go to school for that. I just put that on my bio. But you got people that don't know how to approach any other person much less somebody that they're interested in impressing, you know, in order to, to go on a date. Mm. Now, you also have to take into consideration, and they didn't put this in the article because they, you know, they don't, they don't tell it in real life the way I'm going to tell it. Um, your creepiness factor goes up or down depending on how good looking you are. 
Hmm? That's not to say that good-looking people aren't creepy and can't be creepy. I'm saying you're going to get a lot more of a pass for saying something that could be borderline creepy than somebody who's unattractive. Like an ugly guy comes up and says the slightest little thing, boom, he is the creepiest creep walking, walking free in the town. You let a good looking guy come up and say the same thing, oh, well, that was kind of dorky. <laughs> but, you know, I give him, I'll give him a pass. As a matter of fact, uh, I think some of the creepiest, most dangerous people we've ever had in U.S. America were good looking. You know? Look at that, um, look at that, um, Bundy. Everybody talked about how good looking he was. And I guess he was for the time. Ted Bundy. But either way, and some of these women they were surveying and, you know, asking them on the street and stuff. Um, I, I'm, <laughs> beggars can't be choosers, let me, let me put it that way. I mean, they didn't exactly go and survey the hottest women they could find. I don't know what that means, but I'm sure I'll get flack over it. It is what it is. I'm just telling the truth. Because, I mean, the ugly people need love, too. So you got a guy who's ugly, right, in this scenario. The guy's ugly, and then he's nervous and kind of awkward acting, and he approaches a girl that's the same level of ugly that he is, but because he's awkward, she's going to judge him as being creepy. I don't see how that's any different than some ugly little, you know, fat, you know, four by four guy, <laughs> you know, looking like a troll under a bridge. You're going to say, I oh, mean, I ain't going out with her. She's fat. Come on, dude. Hmm. I see it as the same thing. Hmm. Well, look at that. We're down one segment. <laughs> Didn't that go fast? Then wasn't that entertaining? Let me see what's coming up next, if it's worth your hanging around for. <gasps> oh, yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So we got more coming up. Hang on. TJ's Podcast. The Ace at Large Podcast is brought to you by Gaston County, North Carolina. Find out all fun things to do in Gaston County, including all the events and unique shopping it has to offer at acetj.com slash Gaston. That's acetj.com slash Gaston. Back again with our friend Richard Takato, the Richard Takato Companies. Now, uh, Richard, tell us about this cash out equity thing, instant cash, add water, and there it is. It is. It, it, that's how it is. Instant <laughs> equity. I mean, you, t you do the application today, you could close today and get your money in five days. There's no underwriting. There's no appraisal. You know, I think somebody went, didn't you do something like that? Yeah, absolutely. Exactly yeah. what I did. Instant equity. <laughs> it's very easy. And Richard yeah. walks you through the process. Find out more at homewithrichard.com. Your New Year's resolution is in full swing and you are trying to lose weight. Help yourself with Calitrin. Calitrin is the safe, effective way to lose weight. When you buy three months supply right now, you'll get three months free. It's scientifically proven to help you lose weight. Order it now at acetj.com slash weight loss. Calitrin. Back to TJ's podcast. Okay, world, here we are. The world of TJ Fanaticos. I love you. Oh, man, do I love you. I love you. Uh, there is a, um, a big deal going, you know, everybody's talking about that, this, uh, hey, uh, AI, what's the deal with that? No, everybody's talking about all the evil ways that this AI stuff is going to hurt America and the world and all that. Um, I, I tend to believe that uh, it does lend itself to, to making problems for a free people, you know. 
But there's something that is going on with AI now that I think is just, it, it's sad. Um, there's this, I'll just go to, go to the article here. There's a woman in Berlin and her mother died in 2018 at the age of uh, 82. Her name is Serene. That's, that's the woman's name, not the mom's name. Uh, she had just given birth to her first child, Ishtar, is the child's name. Again, we're talking about Germans now. Don't be judging. Um, so, obviously, she felt grief. So, what does she do um, to ease some of this grief? She made connection a connection with her deceased mom. And not through a, um, you know, some sort of a psychic or fortune teller or tarot card reader or any of those types of uh, things that I believe uh, to be scams. She reached out through the power of AI and chatbots. You heard me. So... She gave Project December, an AI uh, tool that stimulates the dead, information and all to help her with her grieving process. So what they did was these um, computer people, for lack of a better term, charged her, you know, so, so many dollars an hour so she could sit and converse with her dead mother on an AI chat box. I'm not kidding. Um, this app has more than 3,000 users, all of whom pretty much use these uh, computers to have conversations with and contact with their deceased relatives. Um, so the way it works is this lady told him all about her mom. You know, what her mom was like, what kind of, you know, where her mom was born, all these statistics about her mother. And then, I don't even think, I don't even think they made a um, an AI person that looked like her mom for this. I think it just was in text. So, She's sitting here chatting with a computer that's pretending to be her dead mother. Are you, are, are you grasping all that? Do you, do you, do you get the, the full power of what I'm, what I'm talking about? Or as the kids say nowadays, what I'm speaking to? Here's an example. Serene puts into the machine, Hi, Mama. Are you well? Well, first of all, uh, is that what you ask a dead person? I don't, I don't think I would. If I, my mama's still alive, so I, I, you know, it's hard for me to say. But if I'm sitting down and I've, I've paid money for a machine to pretend to a computer to pretend to be my mama. You know what the first thing I'm going to want to know about is heaven. I'm going to say, "Hey mama, what's heaven really like?" But you know they don't know this, these computer people because most of them are godless. And I'm guessing this woman is too because you know I I don't think religious people of any kind believe in all this crap. Okay, so let me get back to the... Sorry, I rudely interrupted myself. Hi, Mama. Are you well? I am fine. So are you eating well? Yes, I'm doing my best. I'm going to shop for food today. Well, don't buy too much, Mama says. <laughs> it's so realistic. <gasps> 
She said, uh, Serene said, there were moments that I felt very, that I felt were very real. There were also moments where I thought anyone could have answered that this way. Well, okay. Now, this is usually how you can tell the difference between a godly person and someone who's not. Okay? She says that she's a, a quote-unquote spiritual person. Now, that's not to say that anybody that describes themselves as a spiritual person is not a godly person. I'm not saying that because I, I'm, but I'm saying that the, the term has been hijacked and been used in so many different ways. You know, people who sit around and, and, and play with these crystals and stuff and pretend like they have special powers in them and all, most of the time would describe themselves as, I'm a spiritual person because they think that's spiritual because of the, the magic powers that come out of these crystals. Now, some people don't. Some people play with crystals and stuff and they still have a strong belief in God and, and all of that. But most of the time you would say, like if somebody says something to me, uh, I would name my faith, you know. I would say I've always been a, a Christian. You know, I've all, I was raised in a, a, a very strong Christian household. I wouldn't say I've always been spiritual as I'm talking about making contact with my dead mama on a computer. You see? Now, she said that um, her mom was calling her by her nickname and, you know, those types of things. But again, that's all put into the computer. And she knows that. Thank God she knows that. I'm sorry, thank spiritual crystals and universe that she knows that. Um, but here's the thing. Oh, never mind. If I say this, I'm going to be going too far into the, into the political world. No, no. All right, I'll just say the one thing. This is exactly the way uh, the predictions of what the climate is going to be in 50 or 100 years works. They input data into a computer and then it spits back out whatever is put into it. That's all I'm going to say. All right, moving on. But uh, her mama says in another part, I'm watching you. How do you watch me? Are you a rose, a butterfly? See, I, mama, what's going on in heaven when you're watching me? What, you know, are you a rose? Are you a butterfly? I love this. I'm the breeze. Her mom says, I'm the breeze. Are you a cool breeze in summer or a cold one in winter? And her mama says, I am the breeze that blows when you want it to. <gasps> it sounds just like my mom. Now, I think that this shows that that this is what's giving her comfort and this is what it, uh, she's using as contact with her mom to try to map out in her mind what her mom is is up to now. But I think that this is the opposite. This is the this is the the behavior of someone who is not spiritual. I mean, wouldn't it make sense that once you turn to a computer, then all of the spiritual part of it is gone? I don't know how it works. I'm just asking. Like if you said, hmm, I'm a spiritual person and I believe in nature and the, the, the universe speaks to me and I believe that, you know, in reincarnation and that people come back from the dead and they're in a new life form like a rose or 
or a bug or whatever. But none of that comes out of a computer. Once you go to the computer, then, I mean, that's, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. I just feel sorry for these these people. I want them. I want them to have something else. You know, I want them to have something that that they that they really do have can put their faith into. And and you know, faith is not something you can hold in your hand, or it's not something that you can input into a computer and then and then receive from the computer. I don't know. Just kind of, kind of sad, I think. I didn't mean to get all heavy there. But you know what? Um, I can't talk to my mama on a computer. She lives so far out in the country, her Wi-Fi sucks. I mean, I was there last summer. I couldn't even watch LSU win the College World Series because she doesn't even get ESPN out there. So you want to talk about grief, huh? Whew. That's what I'm talking about is real grief. All right. Got some more stuff coming up. Live, not live, recorded uh, from the TJ and Jody's house borrowed studio for today. Okay? Okay. Hang on. More of TJ's podcast is coming up. The Ace at Large podcast is brought to you by Gaston County, North Carolina. Find out all fun things to do in Gaston County, including all the events and unique shopping it has to offer at acetj.com slash Gaston. That's acetj.com slash Gaston. Our friend Richard Ducato from the Richard Ducato Companies is here. And Richard, not only are you helping people pay off credit cards, you're helping them with home repairs as well. Oh, that's right. We had a, one of your listeners called in. She had to get her pool repaired. She get, had to get a new roof on to even get the loan. And we got that work done before it closed and paid for it with the cash out. All at one time. All at one time. Can do that easy. at a bank. No, you can't. That's what it's about. Options with the Richard Ducato Companies. Find out more at homewithrichard.com. That's homewithrichard.com. The Richard Ducato Companies. Your New Year's resolution is in full swing and you are trying to lose weight. Help yourself with Calitrin. Calitrin is the safe, effective way to lose weight. When you buy three months supply right now, you'll get three months free. It's scientifically proven to help you lose weight. Order it now at acetj.com slash weight loss. Calitrin. Welcome back, world, to TJ's podcast. podcast. Okay, fanaticos, we're back, we're back. Back again. Um, I'm sorry, when, when we were in the break just now, I, uh, I looked at my phone because I've, I've got a timer going on my phone to tell me when to shut up. You don't tell me when to shut up. Uh, so I pick it up to reset it, and then um, I thought I had a message. Anyway, I end up looking at a video for a second. Uh, I, I, li I like to cook. I love to cook. I'm very, 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 very good at it. Um, and I've been doing it for a long time, you know, as a hobby, way before everybody on the social medias thought they were, uh, you know, th start thinking they were cooks and could show everybody how to do stuff. But I love watching videos, no matter how amateur they are. I just like watching how people cook. How they're, especially, you know, when they're showing what they're cooking for their family, you know, in, in, uh, cause I'm very interested in regional, uh, foods and I like to try to pinpoint where the people are from, if they're, whatever the dish they're making. For example, in the Southeastern United States, there is a, there is a dish that is, uh, predominantly just in this area. I live in North Carolina, so it's in the Southeastern part of the United States um, North Carolina, South Carolina, Alabama, you know, 
so forth. I don't know that it's a thing in Florida, but it's called liver mush or liver pudding, some people call it. Uh, and it's, uh, it, it's kind of like a sausage product, but uh, it's a breakfast thing and it's got its own flavor. And I love that when, when areas have their own thing, like there's a little area in Indiana that's known for their brain sandwiches. Um, it just looks disgusting. It's cow brains cooked in a certain way. And the way I saw it on TV, they were eating it on just regular white bread, white sandwich bread. As disgusting as it is, I still like that it's regional. So I like watching these videos. But I also find things in these videos that are so annoying. And I don't want to tell the people that it's annoying because I just want to pick on them. I want to help them. You know, I want to help these people. For example, the one I just watched was a nice lady in her kitchen. She's making some sort of dessert. And as she's going through the steps of how to do this dessert, it was like a, a pineapple strawberry cake kind of thing. And she's layering crushed pineapples and all that. And everything that she goes to put into this cake, I don't know whether it was her husband or her brother or somebody. It was an adult male who was videoing it had to comment on everything she was putting in there. And then we're gonna put uh, two sticks of melted butter. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. The camera person shouldn't be talking. Okay, okay. Another thing I don't like, and I'm, I'm probably gonna do an entire social media post about this in a funny video, but when you're doing videos, and it doesn't even have to be cooking videos on social media, you, you could just be talking about something. If you're talking and you want to have music in the video, then you should never, ever, ever, ever have vocals going under whatever it is you're saying. You just don't do that. Now, how do I know? Because I am a radio expert. And that is the top rule of radio. Number one rule, day one of a radio career, do not talk over someone singing. Think about when you're listening to like a top 40 radio station. The, 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 we call them jocks in the business, short for disc jockey. The jock is talking, telling you, you know, who's going to be at the club this weekend and whatnot. And then they're talking over the introduction of the song and they stop talking right before the first uh, word comes in with the singing. Okay. If you hear a grinding type noise in the background, it's coming from my bedroom downstairs. It, it's my, um, my snore machine cleaner just kicked on. You probably can't hear it, but if you can, that's what it is. Don't. Don't be thinking that it's your, your phone or something making a weird noise. But I can't necessarily stop and run downstairs and, and stop it at this moment. So, whatever. So, you hear him talking over the introduction of the song. And they stop talking right before the person starts singing. Right? We call that in the business taking it to the post. Right? And it's, it's a talent. To be able to do that, especially if you are not watching a countdown clock, it, it, there's no talent involved with it if you're watching a timer click down to tell you when they're going to start singing. Now, we legendary, you know, cream of the crop radio people can hear it. You don't have to look at a timer or anything. You just hear the song while you're talking and you know when to wrap it up and when to, when to you know, shut up. But the biggest sin in music radio that you can do is to still be talking when the person starts singing. You call that walking over them, stomping on them. Mainly people say, I walked all over the vocal. You walked all over the vocals. You can't be doing that. You didn't just walk over the vocals. You stomped all over them. You know. So when you see these videos or you, when you're making a video for social media and you go in there and you pick your background music, don't put your voice talking over somebody singing. One, it's distracting. People can't really pay attention to what you're saying fully 
because of the song and then sometimes people can't even hear exactly what you're saying because you don't you know you got it's like having two people talk at the same time you gotta look at it that way so there's that now if you see a video on my social media pop up later where I'm really going on and on about it riffing then um, don't think he's out of material I've already heard him do that because I said in the beginning I'm probably gonna make a video about it I just bounced it off of you first look at it that way what else do people do that's annoying? I know y'all can hear that. <laughs> and it, that machine goes for a long time too. My uh, snore machine must be really dirty. Um, so I was at the um, I was at the doctor's office earlier today, and. I was getting blood work done and the uh, young people that work for the ACE and TJ network always yeah, have a, a good time laughing at ACE and me because they say we, we're constantly giving blood but it's not giving blood giving blood is when you donate a pint to the to the blood center or the blood mobile or whatever the Red Cross it's not like that they're you know, testing your blood. You're not a, you're not donating blood. But when you get a certain age and you're on you know regular medications and all, they have to keep checking to make sure that everything's all right. So I was in there today, and I always have to give them the same spiel because um, I can't. I'm, I'm kind of queasy. Not kind of. I am queasy about certain things. Um, for example, I can't look at blood, but I can watch those cyst removal videos all day long. And my wife would go, how do you watch that gross stuff? You can't even watch blood on TV. And I say, well, because there's no blood in it, you know. It's just gooey, icky stuff. But if they start to do something where it's blood, then I can't watch it. So I have to go through the whole thing. Very nice man named Michael was taking my blood. Um, it's an African-American gentleman. And I know I was acting weird because I don't want to see the needles or any of that stuff. So he's, he's over the top nice. And I'm trying to be over the top nice back because that's the kind of son bitch I am. And um, I'm just not, I'm just like trying to look straight ahead. You know, I don't want to look at, and, and I, I was like, is he going to think I'm a weirdo? Is he think I don't know how to talk to people or I'm being a jerk? So I explained to him, I said, hey, I'm sorry if I seem like I'm being weird. I can't look at the blood. I don't want to see the blood or the needles or anything. So that's why I'm not looking at you or making eye contact with you. I'm not, I'm not trying to be rude. But that's why. And he goes, oh, okay, I understand. And then it turned into, you're not going to pass out, are you? Do we need to get this and that? Or, you know, you're going to pass out? I was like, no, I'm not going to pass out. I just don't want to, I just don't want to watch it. I still think he thought I was a jerk, though. Probably thought I was some kind of a freak weirdo. Because, you know, when somebody's talking to you and then they, they just don't ever look at you and they're just looking down or looking straight ahead and you're over here. It's like when a server comes up to the table, he or she is right here taking orders. And, you know, and what can I get for you? And then you're like, I'll have the, uh, you know, can I get a, 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 first of all, I'm not a can I get a, get a person uh, or let me get a person when I'm ordering. I, I find that to be rude. Uh, let me let me get a cheeseburger and let me let me get uh, mustard on that and uh, uh, let me get fries or I'm gonna get fries with that um, I don't know it just seems kind of strange but if you don't look at the person you know you look kind of looking away and you never make eye contact with them you know they they think something is amiss 
So I didn't want to offend that guy when he's about to stick me in the arm with a needle. You know. And him saying, some weird old white man came in there today, wouldn't even look at me when he was talking to me. I stuck the crap out of him. <laughs> this guy wouldn't do that. He was too nice. But still, you don't want people thinking you're weird, no matter what. Well, some people don't care. Then again, are they so weird they don't know they're weird? And we go back to, you know, full circle. What we were talking about earlier. I don't know. So I hope you um, hope you have a big weekend planned. You're going to go out and have some fun. This weekend, I'm going to be doing... I may be having dinner Friday night with an old, old uh, radio friend of mine who's, in, who's supposed to be in town for a concert. The Eagles and Steely Dan are in Charlotte for a concert. Um, so all the kids will be there. I think Cardi B is the opening act for that. I'm not quite sure. Um, Cardi B, Megan The Stallion, Sexy Red, they're all going to be opening for Steely Dan and The Eagles. Hey, here's something fun. My daughter is friends, or was friends, acquaintances, with Don Henley's son, Don Henley of The Eagles. They went to college together in Nashville and ran in the same circles. How about that? Isn't that something? It's so something. <laughs> uh, but while the Steely Dan and the Eagles, uh, Cardi B, Megan the Stallion, Sexy Red concert is going on in the uptown of Charlotte, I'm going to be at a little show myself. I'm going to be at uh, David Spade. I think David Spade is probably my favorite um, comedian, especially when it's just him talking, just his regular way of speaking, conversing with people, and all. I, I think he's just so unique and quick. Um, reminds me of myself as a younger man. Actually, he's older than I am, but you know what I mean. Uh, but I just and I love his stand up too. But uh, yeah, I would say he's probably my favorite. Stand-up comic all the way around. Um, I like that Nate Bergazzi. I've just recently gotten in, into his stuff. And my wife loves him. Because he's clean. You know, he's so funny. And he's he's clean. And we're like, okay. Well, you love David Spade too? He's not clean. <laughs> you know, she acts like, I only like clean humor. <laughs> Okay, so you like Nate Bergazzi, he's clean, but that's not why you like him. Because she will text me, because uh, we don't wake up at the same time in the morning. I leave and, and start work really early. And she'll text me when she gets up, and she'll go, uh, you've got to go watch David Spade's story on Instagram. It's hilarious. And he's not being clean. So what's the deal, Jody? What's the deal? So anyway, I'm not used to being out that much, you know, because I'm going to be out. Oh, uh, well, by the time you see this, I'm going to be have been out the night before and then possibly Friday with my radio friend and then again Saturday with my little friend Jenny and her handsome husband, Michael. be the second time we've seen David Spade together. Hmm. So that's, that's quite a feat in a couple relationship with couple friends. So that's about it. That's all I got going on. I hope you, um, I hope you are doing better than that with your social life. No, I'm kidding. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to the, to the David Spade thing. Like I said, he's funny. Um, of course we'll be, we'll be sitting in the rafters, but that's all right. That's all right. You know, we're balling on a budget, as the kids say. All right. That's it. I hope you have a good weekend. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, love you. Bye. Serving the world. It's TJ's podcast. The Ace and TJ Studios are brought to you by Calitrin. 
Caltrin is America's number one choice for healthy weight loss, drug and stimulant free, so it won't interfere with any medications or health conditions. Find out more at acetj.com slash weight loss. Just because it's winter doesn't mean this is any time to stay inside and just let the days go by. AceTJ.com slash Gaston has the list of everything you can be doing right now. The memories you can be making with your family in Gaston County. AceTJ.com slash Gaston. Get your home secured for less than a dollar a day with no installation or equipment charges and a lifetime equipment replacement warranty. You can get security for your home. 800-915-8941. 800-915-8941. The Ace and TJ podcast and radio show is brought to you by Richard Takato. Finding a great home loan can be so much simpler with the help of Richard Takato. Go to acetj.com slash Takato or call 704-800-4719. Again, that's acetj.com slash Takato. The Week in Review is sponsored by Hyatt-centric Charlotte South Park, beautiful rooms, and incredible dining options. Book now by calling 980-299-7123. It's the Hyatt-centric Charlotte South Park. As a proven leader in managed IT services, CompuCom delivers innovative solutions designed for how you work today. They'll help you deliver results no matter where you are on your digital transformation journey. It's all at CompuCom. Go to CompuCom.com to find out more. Hey, here's something very special that you do not need to miss. That is being part of the Ace and TJ family's newest show, the Ace and TJ Experience. Space for the shows will be limited. It is by invitation only. Get signed up now at acetj.com slash experience. Currents is Lake Norman's number one lifestyle magazine. Every month, Currents brings you the latest news on what's happening in the Lake Norman area. They've been serving the Lake Norman community for over 13 years. See the latest issue of Currents now at lncurrents.com. If you've got nagging pain, you can get rid of that nagging pain thanks to Neogenics, Charlotte's most trusted stem cell clinic with an over 93% success rate. Set up a free consultation today at acetj.com slash neogenics, N-E-O-G-E-N-I-X. The Johnson Group has been cleaning some of Charlotte's most prestigious businesses since 1985. Family owned and operated. Learn more at acetj.com slash clean. It's first class cleaning with the Johnson Group. Top of every hour, you get caught up on the hottest trending topics in the world. Thanks to Riggins and Now Trending, sponsored by Culver's. The freshest ingredients all day, every day. Make it your new neighborhood spot. Short waits for the freshest food in town. Find details at acetj.com slash Culver's. The Ace at Large podcast is brought to you by Gaston County, North Carolina. Find out all fun things to do in Gaston County, including all the events and unique shopping it has to offer at acetj.com slash Gaston. That's acetj.com slash Gaston. Your New Year's resolution is in full swing and you are trying to lose weight. Help yourself with Calitrin. Calitrin is the safe, effective way to lose weight. When you buy three months supply right now, you'll get three months free. It's scientifically proven to help you lose weight. Order it now at acetj.com slash weight loss. Calitrin. Back again with our friend Richard Takato, the Richard Takato Companies. Now, uh, Richard, tell us about this cash out equity thing, instant cash, add water, and there it is. It is. It, it, that's how it is. <laughs> instant equity. I mean, you, t- you do the application today, you could close today and get your money in five days. There's no underwriting. There's no appraisal. You know, I think somebody went, didn't you do something like that? Yeah, absolutely. It's exactly yeah. what I did. Instant equity. <laughs> it's very easy. And Richard yeah. walks you through the process. Find out more at homewithrichard.com. 